This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's another round Android Wear smartwatch. This is the LG G Watch R. R stands for round. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, yet another round Android Wear watch. The Moto 360 is not alone anymore. This one has a 1.3 inch P OLED plastic OLED display, and that means, well, it's brighter and more colorful overall than the Moto 360, which is nice. This is the sleep screen. Another nice thing is, I know it's maybe a little hard to see on videos, the sleep screen is always visible so you can always see the time. This is one of the waking watch faces that you just saw there. Obviously it goes to sleep quite quickly and you don't have control over that. I do find that actually the timing of how long it stays awake makes perfect sense when you're actually using it as a watch. When you're using it for a video like this, you know, it's pretty hard to keep it on. It only stays on for a second or two. Once you're interacting with it, it will stay on. But before we look at the watch face and the software inside, Android Wear here, we've got Android Wear 5 going on, and you can see that it's got the, the increment marks here for the 15 seconds or 15 minutes, depending how you look at it, and hourly marks with little gradations. Makes it look like your average men's diver watch. It's actually not too bad looking. It's stainless steel, matte, black, stainless steel. That's your only color choice. And it comes with a black leather band, which says genuine leather, just so you know it inside there. Only color. If you don't like it though, it's not really the end of the world. It takes standard 22 millimeter watch bands. It's pretty easy to swap them out. So that's nice and that's generally speaking a more affordable way. When you go with the proprietary watch bands for smart watches, sometimes they can be pretty pricey compared to what you can find. Well, if you go to the Swatch store or any place else that sells those kinds of bands. Heart rate sensor is over here and this is the charging connector right over here. So this is another one that uses a proprietary charging base. So it sits on it like so magnetic so it actually goes there and stays in there which is kind of nice and it's got the micro usb connection right here it comes with its own little charger so you don't have to use the one that came with your phone you can charge them both separately which is always well a brilliant idea isn't it you want to keep them both charged up speaking of your phone android wear is basically an extension of your smartphone you're going to need an android phone running android 4.3 or newer and all of the events and stuff like that really come from your phone. We're using it with the Nexus 6, which would be a, probably a likely partner because these really big phones, when you're getting into like a six inch phone, you, it's not always the easiest thing to pull out every time you get a notification. So as a second screen for a giant watch, kind of makes some sense. That's still the thing with Android Wear though. This guy is $299, making it more expensive than the other. Actually, Android Wear smartwatches on the market. The, the Moto 360 is $250. The also attractive Asus Zen watch is $199, being the least expensive. But anyway, you're looking at basically a expensive second screen for your smartphone. The, Android Wear is coming along very quickly. Just since we reviewed the Moto 360 a couple of months ago, there are apps for this, so you can do some standalone things with it, play games, for example, use it as a compass, a calculator. So it's becoming more than just a second screen. And given how quickly, that's just a several months, we've seen so many more programs coming up, there's hope for it. Still, 320 by 320 pixel display right here. There's only so much you can do on a screen that small. For example, we have Evernote for smartwatch now. And I'll show you what that looks like because 320 pixels by 320 pixels, other than using it for like to-do lists and stuff like that, is just not so easy. So if you want to open up a program like Evernote, it's not icon based like Samsung's Tizen OS watches or the upcoming Apple Watch. So you can either flick it like this to wake up the screen and then it's ready for you to talk to it. You can tap on it. Open Evernote. And there it is. I've got Evernote. I've got to do's. I've got nearby notes. Recent notes. Let's just go with recent notes right there. So I've opened up a recent note where I keep track of benchmarks right here and specs for devices we review. And you know <laughs> how useful that is. I'm not so sure. But if you got to call up, say, a recipe, you're at the supermarket, and you just want to make sure you got all your, all your ingredients and you're tracking that, never know. It's quite useful. Or if you're using the to do feature, you get the idea right there. Say you don't want to talk to your watch. You're a little embarrassed by that. Tap on the screen to wake it up and scroll. Instead of speak now, you can see recently used applications like Evernote, for example. You can get to settings. Calculator is another one that I've used. Take a note. All sorts of things are right here. And it also tells you what the voice prompt is 
for those things if you actually want to talk to somebody. So you can send a text message, you can send an email, you can reply to emails. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And right at the bottom of our list, we have start. So anything that's not listed there but you've installed as an application is listed right here. So we've got an Amazon app, we've got a game called Deadly Spikes, we've got our Evernote, Fit is on here, another game, Google Keep for those of you who want to keep track of things to do and all that sort of thing, opening up Google Play Music which really controls the phone for the most part. So that's how you interact with it. Google still envisions this as something that you're going to talk to a whole lot. I think realistically a lot of us are not going to walk around talking to our watches even though the voice recognition is good. It just is kind of an awkward embarrassing thing to do. It's real kind of Dick Tracy. Since Google doesn't allow customization of the user interface of Android Wear, the operation is pretty much the same as any other Android Wear watch, whether it's the Moto 360, the Asus Zen watch, you get the idea. The differentiator is going to be the casing and the looks. Obviously, this one's one of the more attractive ones right now on the market, if you like it. And other than that, the hardware is almost always the same. The Moto 360 went with a slightly slower CPU, but like more of the smart Android Wear smartwatches on the market, this one runs on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 quad-core, clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. So yeah, you have a mid-range smartphone in here. In case you're wondering why these things aren't $100, that's some pretty impressive hardware in there. There's four gigs of storage. Right now, it's pretty hard to fill that up since this doesn't have a camera, it doesn't take pictures. Um, really, it's designed for remote control playback of music that's on your phone, not on the device. But anyway, that means you got plenty of room to install apps and if there is functionality later on to store more stuff on it, that's available to you. 1.3 inch display again, it's OLED, so it is very attractive. It's also pretty visible outdoors. OLED isn't always. You can count on it for having near infinite contrast, very deep black levels. But in this case, it's actually quite bright. You've got six different brightness levels on this, and I find that keeping it at three or four actually works fine for indoors or outdoors. You can also do this if you want to mute the display, as they put it. Say you go into a movie theater and it's too bright, you can do that with it. It weighs around two ounces or so. It's a little bit heavier than the Moto 360, but it's also about 1.6 millimeters thinner. Really, thickness-wise, it is the same as your average men's watch. It's not that bad at all. That said, we do have, instead of being a perfect circle, sort of Movado-esque, like on the Moto 360, we do have these ears that stick out, which is a pretty traditional watch design. And If you're skinny like me, it, I find that it bangs into my wrist bones an awful lot and into my hand bones. Obviously, it looks pretty huge on me. I am a woman, even though I am almost six feet tall. I'm pretty slim. On a man, this probably looks a lot more fitting in terms of size. We, we haven't seen any smartwatches that are really particularly designed for women. That is more dainty, more petite. And part of the problem is they have to fit the CPU, the battery inside of here, and make a watch face that's large enough for touch interaction. Another nice thing about the OLED display is... It's easier on the battery than an LCD is like in the Moto 360. So this typically has been lasting me two days versus just one day with the Moto 360 and some other competing Android Wear watches. Now the Asus Zen watch also can manage up to two day battery life, but still overall, as these things go right now, that's not so bad. Watch faces, you can see that's a pretty moon phase watch face. And if we want to get to settings, we can change them or we can actually use our phone to do that. And you can use your phone to do a lot of these things. In fact, I'm going to show you the phone application now. So here we are in the add a watch face interface or we've also got the one that we're currently using, which comes from LG, the moon phase watch, which is nice. There's some very nice downloadable watch faces right now. Right here, we, you see we're using Bluetooth to connect to it. You can pair it to a new one. You can forget this one. You can look at the demo cards if you need to. Again, more settings over here. You can have control over all notifications here. So say you want to know about all of your emails, your calendar appointments, but you don't want to be annoyed by Asphalt 8's latest daily promotion. You can control that, which is pretty nice. You can set card previews on or off. Mute connected phone, and that means notifications won't bing bong on your phone if it's going to alert you on the watch. Via vibration and screen only, the watch does not have a speaker, sorry, so you can't use it as a little alarm clock. Anyway, I find that mute connected phone feature on my Nexus, Nexus 6 isn't working so well. Most of the time the Nexus 6 still continues to notify me in the same old ways it would as if the watch was not connected. You can resync all apps there as well. 
additional watch faces here. The camping one is pretty neat. So this one actually has you got a compass built into the watch. So you can actually have compass on the watch face if you need to do that. We've got quite a few fairly attractive analog watch faces, which make the most sense given the fact that you've got the analog markings around the edge of the phone. It doesn't really make much sense if you're going with a digital watch face, but there are plenty of digital watch faces there as well. The 500 pixels digital with changing very pretty pictures on the background. I downloaded that one. There's plenty of free watch faces you can download, but it comes with a very good selection. Less than half a year ago, the Android where store was kind of barren now this section of Google Play here that actually has some useful things. You've got Runtastic, you've got Lyft, GPS, RunKeeper Tracker. Of course, some of these are preloaded, like Google Now really is the core thing in the watch. It really is your Google Now device. Games and stuff like that. We'll show you some games on there. So this is coming along very quickly. There is indeed hope for more functionality on the watch itself. Now, for most of the time when you're going to install an app on the watch, by the way, there's a companion app on the phone because your phone is still doing most of the heavy lifting despite the fact you've got that Snapdragon 400 CPU inside the watch. So I've got a whole bunch of things here. I've got a calculator installed on the watch. It has a companion app over here. I have a Compass app, for example, too. News Republic to push news. New York Times can also push news to the watch as well. So you're going to end up with a lot more apps on your phone as well. For example, here's the calculator. So if you want to do simple arithmetic, plus four right there, you can do simple arithmetic on the watch. Notice that there's a little button on the side over here. It's not just to mimic your traditional watch right there. It's actually functional. You can use it to wake up and sleep the display. If a long press will take you to settings. And now we're going to look at sort of a Frogger clone game. So far the games they're not as good as what we've seen on Tizen Samsung watches. I'm sure that they'll come along and improve. There's definitely hope here. But as something to pass the time, there it is. And as being something more than just a notification system for your phone, again, there it is. Speaking of notifications, you swipe around like that, and you can see there we got the weather, next calendar event, and News Republic, news information here. Now, unless it's a real breaking top story, it actually doesn't pipe any of the text for the story. So your next option is, if you swipe that way, to open on phone and then look at the app on your phone. So you're kind of back to square one with functionality in terms of having to do that on your phone. New York Times works the same way. You can open it up on your phone to read more. And we have the pedometer, the step counter, which is actually pretty accurate in this. So is the pulse meter on this too. And you can just tell it to check my pulse at any time if you want to see how you're doing. So Android Wear watches are coming along quickly. They've certainly gotten a lot less ugly. Look at the original LG G watch, not R, meaning it was a rectangular or squarish kind of watch. Much more stylish, doesn't look Fisher Price like a toy anymore. It's not bad looking. And we're starting to see stuff that's a little bit more than just, you know, piping notifications from your phone to the watch, which is great, but how much money do you want to spend for that feature? I'm sure the games are going to get better on this and applications will figure out how to actually make better use of, well, only 320 by 320 pixels. That's going to be a challenge and it will be interesting to see. I still wish that Android would put icons on this. I think a lot of people really don't want to talk to their watches and having to swipe through and get to the launch my programs and then scroll through another list really makes it less of an expedient experience. And the whole purpose of having this on your wrist is to make things at your fingertips available just like that. Still, one of the nicer looking watches on the market, better, better battery life than the Moto 360. Now it doesn't have the 3G connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity of something like the Samsung Gear S smartwatch, or that's running Tizen, not Android Wear. It really depends on what you're looking for there. So this guy, you're always going to have to be within about 30 feet of your phone. Your phone is going to be the lifeline for all information. This can tell the time. You can use the calculator, uh, apps like that that are not internet dependent on the watch, but otherwise for anything that is network dependent, like email notifications, text message being piped over to here, you can do that. So that's the LG G Watch R. It's available now. Again, it's $2.99, making it the most expensive Android watch on the market right now. And 
if you like round, if you like stylish, particularly if you're a man and you want a diver look kind of watch, it's not bad. But as is always the case with Android Wear, it's a work in progress. And right now, it's mostly still just another kind of expensive screen for your smartphone. I'm Lisa for Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.